Hey, hey. Hey, good morning. Good morning to you. Welcome, everybody. We've got uh, quite a few people on watching already. Um, we're broadcasting live. Um, why don't you tell us, Tim, about our great sponsor that we have? Hey, well, thanks, Eric. Uh, and welcome, everyone, to the Penalty Box. Uh, our sponsor is the Woodstock Inn and Brewery. Now, any of you uh, that are watching from New England uh, know that the White Mountains, especially this time of year, is an amazing place to be. And they're an amazing destination. Great inn, great beers. So we're very grateful for them to be on board. And we love beer. We do. We do. Right? We, 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 we love beer. So we, we've got quite a few people on. We've got uh, Robert Brooker on. Mark is on. Ray. Soup Campbell is on. Um, Mark said it's 65 degrees in Arizona. Long, hot summer is over. There we go. Let's get those comments rolling. So what we're going to do, we kick off the show. We're going to talk about um, our shot on goal and and uh, kind of throw out something that's – there's Kellen is on. Something that, that in the is sports world – the sales world, the marketing world, something that jumps out at us. And so, Timmy, I'll let you kick it off with your shot on goal. Hey, well, great. I appreciate that, Eric. Uh, so uh, the shot on goal, as Eric said, is is just kind of our uh, our kickoff. And my shot on goal goes out to um, a football player, Alex Smith. Now, uh, Alex Smith was a quarterback that was drafted uh, first by the San Francisco 49ers in uh, 2005. And uh, he had a pretty good career with them. He was traded to Kansas City, uh, had a great career with them. But in 2018, he was traded to the Washington Redskins, now football team. Uh, yeah. and, in, uh, and in that season, he was tackled pretty hard by J.J. Watt and uh, broke his uh, tibia and fibula. Uh, looked like it could be a Joe Theismann-type ending to his, uh, to his career. But this guy, I'll tell you, he's been an example of perseverance. Uh, he has spent the last two years rehabbing. And when I say rehabbing, 17 surgeries. Wow. Um, uh, four different hospitals and a total of nine months in, in the hospital. And during that time, he got sepsis and uh, all kinds of infections. Um, and, uh, you know, as Eric pointed out, if you've ever seen his uh, leg on uh, YouTube or, or, or on, uh, on the Internet and Google, uh, it's not in it's really in good, good shape. They had to take uh, muscle out of his quad to rebuild uh, his, uh, his leg. And I'll tell you, well, he, he actually came in on a game uh, over the weekend. Um, Kyle Allen had hurt his arm. He was a starting quarterback. And Alex Smith came in. And I'll tell you, his family was in the stands, and that was kind of gar uh, heart wrenching as well. But the thing that really sticks out to me is this guy who just spent two years, seventeen surgeries, uh, in the hospital, was sacked six times and got up off got up off the off the grass. How do, how just like fearless is that to know what all you've gone through? Right, sacked six times. Six times, it's insane. I could, right. yeah, and it, and it could it could have ended a, a, a right there all over again. But you know, uh, you know, this, the fairy tale didn't end the, the correct way for him. Uh, you know, the, the team did not win the game. But my hat is off, and my shout out is to Alex Smith, who just is an example of even when you're down and out, you are not down and out. So. Yeah, it's an incredible story. I think anybody that uh, doesn't know who Alex Smith is or doesn't know what his leg looks like, Google it. And you'll be like, how in the world did this guy come back from that? And it, it is. It's all about pers perseverance and just the, the want to. Uh, my shot on goal, probably a little more um, controversial, um, but the final NBA ratings came out. Um, Game six had a huge whopping 5.6 million viewers. Wow. Game six last year had 18 million viewers. Okay. 1998 Bulls Jazz, 36 million viewers. So my question is, or my thought, my shot on goal, are we have we not really connected with sports because of COVID? Is it different because NBA is played in a bubble? Or are we just tired of the athletes and, and politicizing sports right now? And I, I think maybe it's a combination of both. But viewership, you know what? We're not watching. No doubt. No ratings doubt. Are down. NFL ratings are down. Major League Baseball was down a little bit. Major League Baseball season was so wonky, weird. I couldn't even really get into it. And I love baseball. You can see base, you know, baseball stuff behind me. So, you know – what, what's your thought? Are we are we over politicized at this point, and and do we just want our athletes just to play, or what's your thought on that? Well, I think COVID had a lot to do with it. You know, I think that uh, during COVID, people realized that there's other things besides sports. 
uh, and you know, people are hiking and uh, they're taking motorcycle rides. They're doing, they're doing, they're spending more family time. But yeah. you know, I think you're right. Um, you know, I we could we could rant for the next twenty uh, eight twenty eight minutes on how LeBron James ruined basketball. In my opinion. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, there's no doubt that I'm a I'm a Larry Bird fan. I'm a I'm an old school uh, NBA fan. Uh, I just think that you know, buying your way out of one situation to another situation to uh, uh, win rings is is a separate story. But when it comes to the ratings, I think you're right. Pol- politics and COVID, a perfect cocktail to show people that they don't really need. Um, those things in their life as much. And I think you're going to see some major changes. What do you think? Yeah, I think you will. I think you're going to see sponsorship. You know, I, I think you're going to see a lot of sponsors trying to renegotiate contracts. Why am I going to pay the same amount that I paid last year when there was 18 mil, million viewers and now there's 6 million? Right. Well, I think you're going to see. I I think the the dollars and cents of of sports is going to change dramatically. Just. I, our patterns of has changed. Our patterns of watching sports, our pattern of grocery shopping, our patterns of going out to eat, our pattern of how we sell, you know, because this is a, a, a show about sales and sports. The way right. we sell has changed. And, right. and so I think a lot of things are going to change uh, along the lines of LeBron, um, LeBron, Jordan, where, you know, where do you rank those guys? Oh, I have, by the way, I have Larry Bird and then everyone else. <laughs> well, what, I, what think, I think, I uh, think, I think Jordan changed basketball. Um, I, you know, uh, my favorite stat as a Celtics fan is uh, how many rings did Jordan win while Larry Bird was still in the league? Uh, the answer to that is none. Um, but, uh, but I think he's, he, you know, he's, he had the, the, the most amazing gifts, um, you know, of any player I, I'd ever seen. Uh, LeBron is a, uh, you know, he's a, a man sometimes playing a, a boy's game. He's just enormous. He's kind of like um, uh, Carl Malone uh, size body with, uh, you know, Jordan t- type speed. So, you know, I can't, yeah. I can't say that he's not amazing, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right. You know, sports and, and business and sales, uh, you know, and marketing, it, it's all a blurred line these days. And uh, you know, a, a lot of decisions in sports are made, about about the almighty dollar so yeah great comment from ray that just posted i watch sports to relax and escape to to relax and escape i hate the politics these young guys uh especially james have brought to it i i I think it's such a weird dynamic and it's such a fine line to walk because i think we all hey michelle i think we all want to wear those things on our sleeve you know we want to wear our emotions on our sleeve we want to but and i get I get where they're coming from, but I, it's such a weird dynamic because that's also your job. Like right. there, I can't carry my political views into work. Just can't. And so, you, h- however, like I said, there, there, there's a lot, this is a complex issue and, and, right. but it's a complex issue. However, 5.6 million people watched versus 18 million in the same game last, you know, in a game six last year. You know, I think that you're going to see what you're going to see, uh, especially during COVID, that those advertising dollars that are no longer going to be in major league sports are going to find them their way into the TikTok world and, yep. and uh, into the IG lives. And they already are, um, you know, yep. it's you know, it's almost like how it was uh, when their only advertising was the newspaper, the radio mm-hmm. and the yellow pages and uh, yeah. shout out to some of my yellow page ad uh, friends uh, from the past uh, who are probably watching, but yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was their only vehicle and now the vehicles are changing and there's so much, there's so many ways to get, uh, get your audience's attention and you don't need to bring a, you don't need to bring politics into it for that. Right. Tim, yeah. let me, that's a good question. Um, you own a marketing firm. I mean, yeah. Are you seeing a transition of dollars? Are you seeing people, Obviously, people are are moving from print to electronic. I mean, are you seeing even more of that since March? What does that look like on your end? Oh, it is absolutely more. Um, well, I think also, you know, people are still trying to figure out what they're going to do. Uh, the marketing budgets are still there, but they're on hold in a lot, a lot of cases. And some yeah. people in marketing groups or colleges, for instance, uh, 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 have been furloughed. Um, and, there, and and firms are going to be looking for uh, help, you know. But you're right. The the uh, the 
the uh, the print world. Uh, you know, we cut our teeth in the print world. We actually did two magazine uh, uh, um, ads this week uh, for. There's wow. actually a magazine out there that still needed an needed an ad done. So uh, wow. uh, but yeah, so you're right. The uh, the dollars are going to targeted uh, Facebook ads and who knows what, you know, two years from now we'll be talking about, you know? So, yeah. Well, I mean, you look at, look up here in the corner, sorry, this corner, you know, yep. we, we've got a, we've got a, a sponsor and, and literally it's, it's all electronic. And so right. I, I think the world is changing. And, and um, so, and I, I know we kind of got off subject a little bit, but yep. uh, should we bring in our first guests or what else? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. We've got two guests and we'd like to bring in the first one and I'll let you do the introduction. Yeah, I, I think before we so the penalty box, our guest comes in for five minutes. Now, if they're really good, maybe they get a double major for ten minutes. But this guy, he's just in the box for five minutes. That's <laughs> you know, this clown. And, and we, have, we have to tell him that Wes Wyatt, who is our our, our very uh, talented uh, uh, producer, will be responsible for coming on in and letting know, uh, letting uh, our guest know when his time is running out. Yeah. So when your time is out, we're firing your ass right out of the box. So, so, you know, if you dare get in the box, let us know, by the way, I'd love to see in the comments who, who your top two or three uh, favorite basketball players are, or who you think are the top three basketball players of all time. Cause I probably would do Jordan. I would do Jordan bird, Kobe, Kobe over magic. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, 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 and I say that, and I know before we get to Randy, I say that because I think I fe always felt like Kobe had more of just a killer instinct. He he would put his throat, he would put his foot on your throat, right? You know? And and just pour it on. So I don't, you know, you, we we could talk about this all day long. But Walt <laughs> Frazier. <laughs> Does Walt Frazier get the top fifty? I don't know. There's Bill Russell. Hey, you you know, and and you, you talk a lot about rings, baby. Yeah. There's Russell, there's some rings right there. Yeah, but there was also six teams in the league too at the time. So. Well, yeah, true, true. Well, let's get our guest on here. And uh, when Randy gets in, I'll kick it off with the first question. But uh, Randy Chafee and I got to know each other. Randy, we're not going to start the clock on him yet. So look at him. He's got a blazer on and everything. Oh, my God. I am honored. Shooting Thank videos you, Randy. this morning, baby. <laughs> yeah. So Randy, Randy and I met um, COVID stuff and, and I know Randy is a connoisseur of fine wine and fine women and fast cars. And uh, so he's in the box today. And so Wes, if you'll go ahead and start the, the countdown now, Randy, you've got five minutes. And so you better take your first maybe 30 seconds and tell people how they can get a hold of you. Cause if we wait till the end, like I said, your ass is fired out of here at five minutes. So how can people get a hold of you? Boom. Love it. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. I buy from Randy.com. That's what you get. It's the only thing you need to know if you're in the metal roofing, uh, post frame building, metal building world. It's what I do. Been doing it for 40 years. Makes me a little old, but I like the word seasoned. Um, so that's how you get a hold of me. So um, I'm here to help anybody grow their business because I'm a relationship guy and a business grower, a business builder. I like to look at myself as uh, we've talked about this, guys, as as wind builders, right? We're wind hunters. We're hunters of winds. That's kind of the way I see what I do. So uh, that's all I got for an advertisement, man. So uh, there we go. There we go. Oh, there we. There you are. I want to ask you a question, yeah. just straight up. You know, you know, you see my interviews before, maybe on Instagram. You know, I like to dig really deep, right? Yep. And one of the things very noticeable on your Facebook. You've only ever liked one movie on Facebook, and it's The School of Rock. Can you talk about that movie and what Jack Black has meant to your life? <laughs> <laughs> I, if I liked that, that was a mistake because uh, I don't – you know, it's interesting what you guys hit on a few minutes ago. Um, I was like this a little bit pre-COVID, but all of what you guys just talked about with with – the politicizing everything, Hollywood, sports, everything. I found an amazing thing, guys. Um, I like my life without all that stuff. I, I enjoy yeah. building business. That's my, my that's my goal in life. That's my, my joy. I should say more than my goal. That's my joy. I get up every day just to help customers grow their business. And that's what I love. And so it's amazing how I found that I don't need movies. I watched TV last night for the first time with the Dixie Chick. 
uh, and we watched three or four episodes of Away. If you ever saw that with, uh, yeah, uh, what's, what's her name? Um, I forget now. Yeah, but it's a great. Yeah, yeah, I know they're going talking. to Mars and all that. Yeah, it, it, it's entertaining, but I just don't need or desire all that backroom garbage, right? Because it, it yeah. clogs up my mind. Because I'm a pretty positive person, and so I found that reading, doing videos. Hey, hold on a second. I got a question. Yeah. We only have a short amount of time. I want you to talk about Randy 2.5 Hybrid Amazing. Got it. Talk got about it. that. Let's go. Okay. Randy 2.5. I'm an old road warrior for anybody that knows me. That means that I travel the roads, travel the roads, rental cars, airports, bam, 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 right? When uh, I kind of wanted to ease off of that, but when COVID hit, I had to. And so I'm in the midst right now of converting myself to Randy 2.5 Hybrid Amazing which means, that's my term, that means I'm going to convert old road warrior ways to virtual video in a new world way, which is you call now. So apparently, right? Right. <laughs> so apparently uh, 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 Eric has found a buzzer that he really likes, but uh, hey, um, Randy, talk, ab from Staples. talk about how uh, other people in your industry are uh, not on board with what you're doing uh, and how it's making them look. Well, I, I think there's different levels. You're right. Some are on board, but many are not. Uh, and I think it's a learning process. I don't think everybody, I don't know why it, uh, as a seasoned person in this industry, uh, I grasp it quicker maybe than some, but I have. To me, it just makes perfect sense. So I think as, as guys in my industry do more of this kind of stuff, uh, they're going to start grasping it because we are, as Eric, you pointed out before, we're not going back. We may go back part way. And that's what I'm working on right now is how do I augment the old with the new to, as Eric Bam points out, the now, right? It's the hybrid amazing, as I call it, Eric calls it now amazing or now high, uh, now normal. Um, I think that's, that's where you need to be. And I, and I would challenge anybody in my industry that you don't need to get it. But you better get on it. Yeah, that's just that's yeah, just simple. About that. thirty seconds left, uh, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure um, you know we're going to get a timer here in a second. But uh, any final parting words of thought, deep, you know, anything from you that you got? It's real simple. In, I, I talk about this a lot. Engage. If you engage instead of exist, I talk about that a lot. People, too many people in our industry, and too many people in life and relationships, they exist. <laughs> you need to engage. If you engage, oh, you 10 win. seconds. That's it. Engage in your life and you will win. Thank Be you, Randy. <laughs> you, you are amazing. <laughs> hey, hey, Wes. So, uh, so R Randy imparts some great, uh, great advice for, for, uh, for anyone who's in sales. I mean, we have a couple of people that are in our, uh, we have a group called Megamind and we all found each other, uh, thanks to Eric, over the, co uh, over the COVID situation. And uh, we have a couple of people that are really down the road, you know, pressing the flesh type salespeople. And uh, you know, that still, that still exists, it still does. No doubt, no doubt. So we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up here today, um, Robert Engagement. Engagement's right. I, I think um, I, I've talked about this in the past in our mastermind group that uh, someone once said, the new normal is bring value. No, you should have always been bringing value in sales, even before COVID. So now it's just bringing value. Randy talks about you know hybrid amazing 2.5 and it's bringing value in different ways. It's bringing value via text, via audio, via video, via... <laughs> Name it, it, it's still old school stuff still works. You know, a postcard in the mail, you know, Kellen's on cards that wow, that stuff still works, but right. you can adapt and find different ways. So, what right. else? now, Eric, you know, if, if anyone doesn't know Eric, Eric uh, is the VP of sales for a company called uh, Perfect Crush Pizza Liners, and he goes live almost every day uh, on IG. But I'll tell you, you know, what he's learned over over this COVID, it, it would, would help a lot of people. Can you talk a little bit about um, LinkedIn and how that's worked for you? Yeah, LinkedIn for us has been, um, for me personally, has been massive. Um, we, we were probably more than most already prepared to social sell. 
So, so for me, social selling and kind of my, my kind of tenets of, of what that looks like is, you know, talk about your family first, talk about your customers and your prospects second, talk about your business last and along the way, inspire, connect and educate. And if you do those things, you'll social sell with ease because people will connect with you over your family, right? Right. Customers and prospects will love the fact that you're sharing their stuff. And uh, by the way, a, a really kind of cut, kind of cool, subtle thing about talking about your customers and prospects, you will become the expert in your industry to a lot of people, right? Absolutely. Talk about your business last. Nobody gives a crap about you. They just don't. It, and I tell people all the time, if I, if, if I took a, a family photo of all of us and I handed it to you, the first thing you do is you look for yourself. We're right. all very self-conscious that way. We look for ourselves and we we worry about everybody else after that. We probably look for our kids next and then family members. And, you know, so, so, you know, talk about your family first, talk about your customers, prospects second, talk about your business last. And if you do those things, you will social sell really well. And, and I do that on LinkedIn as well. I'm not high pressure. I'm just, I'm, I'm constantly sharing and constantly sharing, constantly sharing. And um, I've had a lot of coffee this morning. <laughs> but I'll tell you the other thing regarding social selling. Some people look at it and say, well, I can't post three and four times a day. Sure you can. The, the days of Facebook 10 years ago when I would go, want to see what Tim was doing, I would go to Tim's page and click and look on Tim's wall. We don't do that anymore. We scroll, we scroll, we scroll. It's the equivalent of driving down the highway. You could post four times in one day and even your best friend may only see two of those. Right, right. So it's, it's okay. And, and, and if you sprinkle in and you change it up, if one post is about your family and two posts are shares from customers' content, and then one is about your business, you've got to mix it up and change it up that way. That's that's the win. You know, and, and you're absolutely right. And what I've seen in the group of 20 or so that we've been hanging around with, uh, some who are here, some who are watch this after, is you get better at it. You, you really get good at it. You know, it, you, you, uh, you're, you're not afraid of the camera. You're not, uh, you're not worried about saying, um, you're not, you're not looking at, you know, uh, not worried about looking off camera. Um, it's just natural, you know? And yeah. I think, I think this, you know, when you're in front of a customer, um, they can tell real quick whether you're full of shit. Yeah. Right. So now with this new way of doing things, it's not really that different. Hey, I, I think we're up against it here time-wise for what we wanted to do. And uh, do we have time to get to our last guest? I don't think so. Um, so, JG, we're going to reach back out to you and see if we can reschedule you. I do appreciate it. And, uh, All right, man. Eric, why don't you tell everyone how they can get a hold of you? Uh, you can pretty easy uh, at the Eric Bam on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, on Twitter. You can get me there everywhere at the Eric Bam. Easy, easy. Great, great. What and about you, Tim? I can be reached at bostonimpressions.com and uh, Boston Impressions, everything from Twitter to, uh, to LinkedIn as well. Um, all right. So, hey, not a bad first show. I'd like to thank the the sponsor uh at woodstock Inn brewery please uh, check them out uh, look for them in your stores their beers are amazing hey before we go wes you want to jump on wes got any thoughts today how you feeling buddy feeling good feeling good great show guys wes Thanks. wes is a uh, producer extraordinaire if you need a producer for your show th this guy right here this guy is the man he's awesome you feeling better i am feeling better you look great. Your goatee looks impeccable. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess if we don't have time to get, get to JG today, so maybe we can squeeze him in next week. So uh, other than that, who, who's our guest next week? Our guest next week is Brian Monahan. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. Take care. Eric.